trying to understand your market and you're trying to invest in your market, these are going to be some of those fundamental skills that you got to learn to be able to mm -hmm. be, you know, a, a, a really successful investor. And so we're going to be taking lessons tonight directly from Michael. It doesn't matter if you're a sub two or you're buy and hold or you're a flipper. It all starts with getting a good deal. And that's what I talk about. I, I talk about how to understand how to get a good deal. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go from soup to nuts, just like you're a total rookie. So uh, I, I look forward to it. What's our objective here, Michael? What are we gonna try to accomplish here in this next hour? So the objective of this is at the end of the hour, you have the basics of a buy box, and then you have the basics of daily discipline. I've okay. developed a course. Uh, it's all around the thesis of you remember what is earned, not what is given. Mm -hmm. So what you will see if you were to take the course is hours material kind of step by step. We're going to break it out here. So step one is, Cody, you need to pull up Realtor.com and we need to figure right. out a, a buy box for you. All right. Let's so as it. you do that, uh, the whole goal of a buy box is you're going to create something that you're going to look at every day. Right. That's the daily discipline. Perfect. Again, a lot of people that watch this, um, they have jobs, right? Full time jobs. Yeah. For and sure. as, as did I. So. Um, we're going to find a buy box that ultimately results in 20 to 40 active listings. That is the goal. Put in Phoenix, Arizona and see how many active listings. 923. So 4,000. Yeah. So 4,000 is just too much, right? So now <laughs> what I want you to do in Phoenix is let's, is there a zip code in Phoenix, Arizona that you live by or is close to you? Oh, I live in downtown, so I don't know if necessarily downtown is going to be the best. All right, pick one. Pick one that's Let's, you know has some. I'm going to take one of one of our uh, one of our flips. We're going to do there. That. You go eight five Put zero three three. Put that in, and now let's see how many active listings. Yeah, All right, so I think that says eighty. Right, we're getting close. Yep. Yep. Okay, so now let's go into property types. It defaults to any, so I want you to pick single family homes. We have sixty six. All right, we're getting close. So now what I want you to do is go to bedrooms. And you know what? Let's do three and above. We're trying to get to under 40 to keep up. Keep up. If you are doing this in another zip code and you are already at 40, you can stop. We are going to get there. All right. So now let's go to side. I know this area. So so let's call it 1,000 to 2,250. I guess 52 homes. So we probably right. need to filter a little bit more, right? Yeah. So let's, let, let's do like... 1500 again folks what, what will happen once you get your buy box and you really start learning this is you will understand that you can change and learn other buy boxes later oh there we go 33 33 okay so what we're going to do right now is we're just going to say um for 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 whatever reason this is the buy box that cody wants going forward so if cody is following the one rental at a time or the how to get started one rental at a time program, you are going to save this search. It's going to be your only search for the next 60 days. Now you can do buy boxes for multifamily. You can do buy box. Like if you were going to do duplexes through quads, you would probably do all of Arizona. This buy box could be anything you want. The only thing I ask is 20 to 40 active homes. The reason I want that number is because 20 and 40 is enough that you can get through in, in 20 to 30 minutes. It is enough that you could see change, right? As days and weeks go by, stuff will come on, stuff will come off. You'll have price drops. It will have start. It will have a heartbeat. This criteria. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that that makes perfect sense. Okay, so now again, I'm thinking about a new person who doesn't have Cody's experience in real yep, estate. Yep, Things sure. you should be thinking about is, oh my God, I'm so close to getting started. I don't know the rent. I don't know what repair costs are. I don't know. I don't worry about it. It's okay. As we build out the Excel spreadsheet next from scratch, you will start to understand weaknesses and then it will identify where you start to, you need to start networking and growing because focus and daily discipline leads to better understanding, but it also show, shows where you need to network and add skills and go elsewhere. Does all that make sense? Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So now we're going to build an Excel spreadsheet from scratch. If you're in my course, you get mine. Mine is not magical. I challenge everybody to build your own. So, Cody, you're basically going to have four sections of this spreadsheet. This is our buy box spreadsheet? This, this is your buy box. And it's, you know, the zip code and three, two between this and this and, you know, whatever it was. But that is it. This is our buy box. So section number one, property details. Because what you're going to do eventually, once, you, once we build out these headings, is we're going to start to pull up your realtor sheet 
and this, and we're going to start filling it out. Because again, what is earned is remembered, not what is given. Number two is going to be what, what, how much money needs to come out to secure this deal. This is beauty. And I've told you and Pace, and we've talked about all the time, this works equally well for subject to as it does for buy and hold and all of this. Yeah. So it's just about getting the discipline down and getting like getting into the routine where then it starts to feel normal and not as, you know, big and scary really. Yeah. And you identify your weakness. Absolutely. Right. So then in column L, I think that is, you're going to have to put a total, right? What is the total cost? Number th the third section is what is my operations look like every month? Right? So number, the first column likely is rent. Now we're just going to go through the operational expenses that you will take money out of your account every month. Number one is mortgage payment. Number two could be, usually I do taxes and insurance together. And for me, property management. Now, again, you could put zero if you're going to self-manage or you can put property management. You could put in reserves for capital or bad debt or whatever. And then feel free to add anything else you want, like utilities or whatever you deem relevant for your area. Again, you could put in a just a extra section, whatever you want. Now for there, you would put total cash flow, right? It's going to be column M minus those others once we get there. And then finally, number four is my famous yield, right? Yield is going to be a mathematical equation of my total cash flow divided by out of pocket. It will be converted to a percentage. And that is when I say how you learn average. Once you start doing this, this yield column will start speaking to you. So let's now go back to realtor.com and take property one, pick it, I don't know, pick three properties and let's just start filling this out together. So what you'll do is you'll just take, like you'll just pull up the spreadsheet and you'll go, here's the address, here's the bath, bedrooms, you're gonna fill, whatever you think the property details are, are important to you. The whole idea here is the spreadsheet when you're initially creating it, you're gonna spend some time on it. Because additionally, what I would do is I would put in all 33 or 38 or whatever the number was records. And then the first time, you, and then tomorrow when you come back, you're only going to deal with the changes, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Because right? again, you're going to hit the same criteria. Yeah. So, okay. So down payment, usually this is a percentage, right? Is this 20% down, 10% down? Let's just assume 20%. So, okay. so if, it's if you, if you would be building the spreadsheet, it would be column H times 0.2. Now, closing cost. Usually in my market, it's about 2% of purchase. Yep, so that would be sixty eight hundred bucks. And again, I would definitely put I would put the formulas in, folks. Take the time to do that if you're doing this on your own. So okay, make ready. Now let's go back to the listing and let's both you and I look some of the pictures. All, All right. right. Well, you got to do some cleanup. Yeah. All right. So this is actually a good one because a lot of new people coming into this would probably want to replace those cabinets, right? Mm -hmm. Those cabinets are old, dated, unless those hinges are broken and the doors or the drawers don't work. Those, although it looks like underneath the sink, there may be a cutout that's missing. I can't tell. Yeah, it looks like it there. Yeah. So again, this this may might be a C, but let's assume it's an um let's assume it needs let's just look at it together and say it needs eight grand. We're just making stuff up right now. Yeah, yeah. For in, the kitchen. The, yeah, for, for the house. It's gonna take eight thousand oh, dollars okay. once you buy it to make it rent ready. Because again, okay. you don't have to do the tile. You don't have no, to do these. No, no, definitely not. Now what you do is total cost, which is a accumulation of I. I, or no, yeah, I, J, and K, I'm guessing. 82,800. All right, perfect. We're, we we have two columns down. And just remember another thing, right? When you're doing this together and you're following along, for example, something I saw that I would probably add, maybe add to column A on this, Cody, is this property is contingent. Let's put status or something. Yeah, and this one would be contingent. Now we're going to do rental rate. You have any idea what rent would cost in this area? We spend that eight grand. This is probably going to rent for probably about eighteen. I bet about eighteen hundred bucks. Done. Seventeen fifty to eighteen hundred. Okay. Now we need to calculate your mortgage payment. Bank rate amortization. This there is what I. This is what I'll use. And then what do we? What do we think for interest rate? Because I know it's going to be one of the things on here that's going to ask. Um. What did it default four and a half? I mean, for invest. Assuming yeah. it, most people watch to me will be an investor getting their first loan. So there, I would assume 4% today. Let's just assume 4%. 30 year fix. Okay. All right. Well, it's 1336. There you go. Taxes on this will probably be about 100, 110 bucks a month. And then okay. insurance and then what is probably going to be like 70 bucks a month. Done. Add those together. Months. Yeah. Let's so 180. Yep. 180. Okay. Perfect. I like it.
And again, folks, what you would probably do here is you would just make that a, some kind of ratio. Uh, but yeah, so property management, 10% of rent, 8%, zero because you're going to self-manage. What's Cody doing? I'm going to use my property manager that charges us a flat rate of 60 bucks per property. 60 bucks then. What kind of reserves do you want every month? Because you've got to be put, even if, so here's the deal. Another thing, right? You're doing all the 8K up front, which I don't include. Uh, you still have to have reserves. Stuff still breaks, but you've done the big things. You, you didn't do any band-aids. What would you say that somebody should be doing on a property like this? Like someone's Cert like, oh my gosh, I don't know. How much do I need? Certainly a hundred bucks. And if you know the area and it has, really it's about turnover, right? A hundred, yeah. 150 bucks. Now we are miscellaneous, yeah. Yeah, so if you, again, in your area, if you find, like, if, if, if you're in a snowy area and you've got to pay for snow removal, or mm -hmm. if, you, if you're if you buying in somewhere that has an HOA or whatever. I'll add HOA, because I know Arizona, we have a lot of HOAs. Perfect. Again, this is what, this spreadsheet has to be yours. I can give you the guide. I can walk you through step by step. But, again, what is earned is remembered, not what is given. And then for miscellaneous, let's put zero. We'll just leave it. For now, so now we got to calculate cash flow. So it's rent minus those columns, right? A Was, is it a nineteen dollars a month. Okay. And what I need to do is convert that monthly to yearly. So that's monthly cash flow, and now we'll do yearly. So that times twelve. Right. Okay, cool. Now let's do your yield. It's gonna suck, but at least we've gotten here. So now equal that U two two divided by which is the slash. Mm -hmm uh total cash yeah there it is l2 so it's there a whopping 0.28 percent that folks sucks but 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 again you don't you've, want that deal <laughs> well, well well i don't know yet because we're trying to figure out average maybe this deal is average and that's that zip code sucks let's do two more together and the reason you would say active is because today it's active but tomorrow when you come back to this it could be contingent and then what I would do is I would say, like assuming it's tomorrow, November 22nd went contingent. Because what you'll see as you go through this in three weeks, it might become active again. It's like, oh, mm. it fell out of escrow, right? All right, let's, let's call this one a zero. Let's call this move-in ready just for okay. let's do it. So this would be a zero. Okay. So we Same. got our total cost again, 69000 plus, plus our 6900 in closing costs. Mm -hmm. So we got 75900 and again, I think it's going to rent for probably about the same. Okay. So our mortgage payment. Same. They're thereabouts. Yeah, just about the same. So taxes and insurance going to be about the same. Mm -hmm. Property management, about the same. Reserves. Yep. Same. same. HOA. Oh, I don't know. This one may not have an yeah. HOA. Yeah. Let's, let's see what we got. Four, two, da, 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 da. Ooh, this has an attached guest house with a one bed, one bath. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so rent goes up. It's not 1800. Yep. So now yep. what's a one bedroom, one bath go for? Um, like depending on what it, looks, let me see what it looks like. I want to see what it looks like. Okay. This is exactly why we do this folks. This is why you go through these details. This is probably oh. the one. Bed, yeah, that's one it. Bath. Yeah. They took, they took a, um, it's a studio probably, or well, I guess they yeah. call it a one. Yeah. They took a pool house and they made it a rental. Yeah. Yeah. So that, I mean, I would say probably 750 to 800 for Let's this. call it, a, I don't call, call it, yeah, call it whatever you want. 700, 800. Yeah. So 800, let's do it. So add 800. Yeah. So that's 2,600, right? Yep. And there was no HOA, so zero. Yeah. This one has a pool, right? Remember the Ooh, last one, the yeah. HOA did the pool? So does your insurance go up? Yeah, insurance is definitely going to go up. So let's add, let's make the, let's try to make this as legit as possible. So let's adjust that taxes and insurance up 250, 70 yeah, bucks yeah, more. 250, yeah, 250 is probably pretty good. All right, we're doing that because of, and again, folks, you probably don't know this. It's okay. As you go through this day after day, you will ultimately call an insurance agent and ask these questions. We pay $109 a month for pool service. Oh, pool service. Perfect. There you go. Yep. I like you did that. And we have 720. Okay, 720. Then you go 710, 20 times 12. And we have 8640. And folks, don't tell me there's no deals in Arizona. You just found an 11%. Stop your crying and whining. <laughs> of course I'm kidding. This this is what this is what happens when you do the work.
right? I'm going to assume, and I have lots of people around the country doing this stuff. I'm going to guess this turns into a decent deal in Arizona, right? I'm going to guess average in Arizona today, given how hot it is, is like four or five percent. But yes. let's let's go do one more. Let's, I'm excited to have over ten percent. Yeah, exactly. I would do that deal again. When I say I would do that deal, it means I would write the offer and then start doing due diligence. Yeah. If you're brand new, don't get excited because in the beginning, your assumption could be all wrong. Yes. Right? <laughs> do When you start this buy box, I want you, everyone listening to know you have 60 days before you can start to really understand what is good, what is average, good or great. It's just, it takes time. Cody's done this and look at that. That's what 20, that is what 20% down. you got 11% return. That's great. Yeah. People are starting to realize even more, you know, how you're able to start to make better decisions as an investor when you know the data and you're able to, you know, know what's average and then what's great at the end of the day. Yeah. The whole goal here, the one question I'm trying to give you the power to do is say, what is average in Phoenix, Arizona, zip code, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's going to take time. It doesn't come in a day. It doesn't come in a week. It doesn't come in 20 days. It's it's a 45 to 60 day exercise. What you would do is you would co you come back tomorrow. You first first rule of thumb: don't change your buy box. Don't change it. Don't change it. Don't get stupid. Don't outthink. Don't out. Don't outthink the process. Same buy box for 60 days, and then you're updating the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet will get long. It's okay. Because ultimately what's going to happen is that column that says yield, you could call it cash on cash or return on capital. Call it pixie dust for all I care. That is the only column that matters. You will start, you can sort, if you know Excel, you can sort. And you will start to say, oh, look, average in this zip code is about 4.2. I'm just making it up. Yeah, yeah. Well, great. Now you know. Now if you can say after 60 days, and again, folks, have conversations with people around you. And say, hey, my market's 4.2. Oh, by the way, look at row three. There's an 11% deal there. Why was it different? Because it had a pool house converted to a rental. Mm -hmm. Now, in fairness, maybe there, which, like what we did, maybe what you learn is it's on one meter. That's definitely going to be an on one meter situation. Right. So what you would do, again, 30 days from now, is you would go back to that column and you would add something for energy. Because maybe you have to split them or... Maybe mm -hmm. you as the owner has to assume some responsibility or whatever, right? right? So mm -hmm. these are all opportunities to learn. Just because it said 11% doesn't mean it's a great deal. It means it needs more research. Right. And maybe there's a reason and like the one, like the one bedroom casita needs to be ripped out and you're like, whoop, can't get the 700. Not, not permitted, not supposed to be there, you know? Exactly, exactly. And then the other thing you could do, this is, this is just as valuable for sub two. When we're doing this right now, we were assuming 20% down. So yeah. most of my students are, are ecstatic above 10%. If you're doing subject two and you're like, go back to the spreadsheet. And let's pretend these are yeah. some subject two details, deals. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Let me share this. 7%, right? I just want to yeah. make, I want to remember that number. So right now it's 11%. Yep. But what so we're going to do is point. we're going to slash the down payment to zero. No down payment, but we still, we got some problems we got to solve, I guess. You know, let's call it. 50, you know, 15,000. Yeah, 15 grand. That's that one was in good condition. So yeah, make good. ready was zero. Yep. Yeah. So we got 21,900. All right. We changed nothing else. Yep. So, so it we should went be from a, 11% to 39.45%. That's the beauty of subject two. Subject two to me is the way to get in with very low down payment, not nothing. Yeah. Uh, because you got problems to solve. You still have make ready. A lot of people don't realize you still have yep. make ready. Still got to go through a title company. But it yep. is a, it, you don't have to do deals with 20% down. No. Uh, a lot of people that follow me will. Uh, but as you go into a recession and as subject two becomes the most, you know, a very popular thing in the next recession, the deals, the yield, you went from an awesome yield at 11% to an even greater yield at yes. whatever that is, 32%. Yeah, 39.45%. Damn, near 40. I would do that deal, I think. I might do that yeah. deal. <laughs> Solid deal. <laughs> yeah. So again, so now that you've done this and you've done all 38 records, what I would hope you would find out is what you don't know. So mm -hmm. for some, like you knew what your property manager charged, 60 yeah. bucks a unit. Most people don't. So great. you Because what you'll see in my course is once you get done with the first three sections, number four is what do you don't, who do you need to network with? So you'll need a property manager. Get a couple of quotes. 
talk to other investors. You'll, you'll need to talk to contractors and painters. And again, it's all about getting a feel. I want you to spend 20 to 30 minutes a day on this and then go do something else. Some people just want to spend endless time. No, you're going to come back tomorrow. You're going to come back the next day. You're going to come back the next day. No days off. You are coming back to the spreadsheet, adding records that come on, noting when they change. Because again, what will happen three weeks from now? Maybe listing number three has a price drop. Well, that changes the numbers, right? It goes so down for, 20 grand. So for, you know, my reference as, as a newbie here, what am I doing? So if Monterey here, it goes back on the market. Am I going, am I creating a new column that says back on the market? There's two columns we haven't talked about. One of the columns that you will add as the heartbeat starts to change is you'll add a record card, a date of change. And then the other column is you would, I always, newbies, I always tell them on the very end at a big column called comments or thoughts or questions, right? Because as you will go through this, like on number two, what I would add there is has a one bedroom, one bath casita because, because that's not normal, I'm guessing. Oh, no, it's not. So I would add that. So as you're going through this, you're going to see a high yield. You're going to be like, because after a while, you, you'll, you looked at 150 different listings. Forget yeah. You're gonna, yeah, you're going to forget. You're going to go come back here and go, oh, this has the one bedroom, one bath casita. Yeah. And then the whole goal here, after 60 days, I want you to be able to tell anybody around you. I would want you to tell Pace. Pace, in 60 days, the average zip code around here is 4.2 uh, for three bedrooms and above, two baths and above, between here and here square footage. And then, you know, this is if, – if, and again, here's the deal, right? Anybody can do average deals. If you are following me, Pace or Cody, I do not want you to do average. Average is lazy. I want you to learn average and then do good or great. If average is five, what would you okay. do then? So if average play? is five, and again, the, some of this will be on your spreadsheet, right? Because you'll see a range. But let's just say right. average is five and it's a very tight, very hot market. Good could be six, six and okay. a half. Great would be eight, right? A point to... So basically a point and a half and then another point and a half would be great. So okay. if your average is five, good would be six and a half. Great would be eight. Why did we do single family only? Why not do condos? Why not do townhomes? Why not do other types of properties? So I want it to be the same property type. I don't want to mix mm -hmm. property types. When you go into realtor.com, you had, it said anything. And then it said single family. Then it said condo. Then it said multi. Then it said land. Then it said mm -hmm. mobile. I don't care which one you're picking, but you're only picking one because you will see there's so many different variables between oh, them. Yeah. Don't mix yeah. them in the beginning. If you just want to do condos, great. Just do condos. Mm -hmm. But don't mix condos with single families because then you get all confused and what's Numbers newer are. and what's this yeah. and what's that. Roldan says, people, this is 25% of Michael's course for free tonight. Watch this over and over again or buy or – buy his course before the price goes up. I mean, this is, this is amazing. This is so good. This was like, the thing that I loved most about this is that we, I, we didn't practice or anything before. <laughs> You're just like, Hey, pull up an Excel spreadsheet and go on realtor.com and let's just start going through it. And we're able to, you know, within 45 minutes, get to a stage where, okay, I can, I know what I need to do to be able to build these numbers and mm -hmm. be able to, you know, master this zip code in the next 60 yeah. days. Yeah, you, we did in about 45 minutes. There's, and Roldan's not wrong. There's three or four hours of me going through how to do this, holding people's hands through the, through this. So, yeah. Hopefully people actually go and take this. I know it, it's so funny to me. And I know that you experience this as well as like this stuff to me is exciting. I'm like, oh, this is super cool. Like being able to calculate the yield and figure out what's a deal versus what's not a deal. But it's not like the super sexy, like, here's how to close sellers and here's the magic line to get the deal done and, you know, that. But this is the stuff that actually, you know, it's where the rubber hits the road. Like, this is where you're turning from just a interested investor to, like, a serious investor. Yeah, if, you, if you're going to do the work, I'm here for you. But I, I after giving this away, if I, I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> Love it. Love it. So Michael, I guess, you know, we could, we could wrap it up, but any closing thoughts for those new, maybe newer investors or the ones that are just trying to get the, get the ball rolling from this? Yeah. The, the thing I would tell any new investor is real estate investing is a skill. 
And because it's a skill, every single person watching this now or ever watches this can be better at it, everyone. And I don't know of any better way than focus and daily discipline. This is not a Saturday thing. This is not a Friday thing. This is a seven days a week thing. Real estate market changes all the time. There's a heartbeat. There's a pace. There's a there's a sixth sense that you will build when you find good deals. And if you don't do the work, you're gambling. And I don't like to gamble with money. No, definitely not. There's a lot of people that are going to get... The, the thing that that's scary to me is, you know, over these last couple of years, like with inflation just going crazy and prices going up and rent rates going up, that some people are getting lucky. Mm, God, yes. Like I, I watch some investors buying certain deals and I'm like, I don't God. see it, you know, <laughs> but you know, it's, I'm sure you saw a lot of that and you know back in 2000 before 2008 it's like people are just like oh it's, well it's going to go up like oh, yeah. it'll go up while we're remodeling it. I've been do I've been doing this a long time which means I've been doing this before the crash. So <laughs> my journey starts in 02 which is a pretty normal market and then it gets nuts and then people lose a lot of money. Yeah, the the, mar the market is making a lot of people. Uh, there's a lot of flippers that won't be around in a year and a half. There's a lot of wholesalers that won't be around in a year and a half. When we get to a flat market, it will bust people out. Heaven forbid the market rolls over. We'll, lo we'll, lose, we'll lose half the investors because they're just they're put, they're bad debt structures, bad deals. I, I can't tell you how many flippers had the project delayed and made money. Oh, it took me two months longer to do my flip and I made money. That's not normal.